Yo, what's up everybody, Tuna here. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about Lightning Arrow. Lightning Arrow seems to be the skill that has plot armor. You know, GGG has not nerfed it. However, we have gotten a little bit of a small indirect nerf in the form of Sniper's Mark getting a little bit of a damage reduction as well as losing two splits. But since this skill wasn't actually abusing um, splits to get additional single target damage, it doesn't affect us too much. So we are pretty much using the exact same setup as we were in the past in the form of Lightning Arrow linked to returning projectiles to get additional clear and Artillery Ballista linked to Focus Ballista for that single target damage, right? Now there are other variants that you can choose, like for example using Mana Forge there instead of Artillery Ballista, although I think especially on a league start where you have a lower budget, Artillery Ballista does pull through as being the higher damage variant but at the expense of you, of course, having to put down your totems. Now, these totems, you know, you place them down pretty fast. So to me, it's not really much of an issue, but I know that the alternative is out there if you wish to use it, but I will be covering the variant where we are using the totems. So let's talk about a lining arrow and let's do a little showcase. I've basically just put in a little map here with, um, you know, a Dune Legion with a Rusted Legion Scare, which essentially is basically like, this is the build's home now. You might see a little bit of like uh, cutting here because I have a widescreen monitor, but I've made sure that the UI is centered so you guys know what you're seeing. So yeah, Lightning Arrow is a build that is fantastic at clearing maps. Like it is one of the best map clearers in the game. And um, yeah, it's really good from League Start as well because you can basically pick up items off of the floor and be on your merry way. Essentially, you're going to be, you know, picking up anything off the floor and putting it onto your character. So as long as you have a good item filter, you're basically good to go. It's also one of the best builds for SSF. You know, many of the SSF blasters have been using Lightning Arrow as their choice because, yeah, if you can efficiently farm maps in early league and farm them fast on a character like this that doesn't require all that much gear, you're going to just be at a massive advantage over, you know, builds that otherwise would need more care into its itemization. And especially, you know, um, it's one of the builds that can push into higher tier maps and higher tier maps are the place where you're going to be getting most loot. So I really like this build uh, for that matter because you can just basically take Lightning Arrow from the early axe and you just play Lightning Arrow all the way into endgame and it's a fast build, it's a fun build, uh, of course fun being subjective but yeah I really enjoyed it and it's something that I've played for thousands and thousands of hours. I will not be league starting this build this league but uh, I gotta tell you guys like for the for the many league starts that I've had with this uh, with this build I've really enjoyed it. And it is by far one of the best farmers, you know, for, you know, rushing something like Legion, also altar farming and all that kind of good stuff that you'd expect to do on a league start. It has pretty good single target damage. However, it's like, it's not the craziest single target damage by any means, but it does have pretty good damage as you can see there. And it also has overall like okay survivability. It's definitely on the lower side. But since we are pumping as much evasion rating into our build as possible, you're going to be avoiding damage a lot of the time. Especially if you put care into it, you can get easily up to 95% evasion. And thanks to that, as well as spell suppression, you know, you should be mitigating most of uh, the deaths that you would usually come across. Um, you know, through the fact that you're you know, freezing, avoiding, as well as suppressing. So overall, it's a nice package for soft core. I do not recommend playing this build on hardcore. So as some of you guys might know, I have written a very in-depth guide for Lightning Arrow and basically everything that you need to know about how to progress the build and what the build is good at, what it's good at farming is present here on uh, Max Roll. So this is just the best way for me to present all of the information for you guys that might need actually like a bit more of a handholdy type of build. And, you know, I just really think you guys should check this out. It's going to be helping you guys go from very early, you know, through maps into very late end game and get this character really popping off. Um, as well as, you know, providing you with a little bit of advice for crafting as uh, and some tips and tricks, of course. But this is also a great way for me to sort of present the build to you guys because we have developed this really nice tool that has a way to sort of show you guys all the information that you need to know. And uh, yeah, so um, the build rating, let's just start with that, right? So I think the build is generally really easy to put together. That's why I put it at like a very low difficulty. Uh, it's really easy to put together because essentially you um, you can basically start with Lightning Arrow from very early in the campaign. I like to level with um, Reign of Arrows instead, but you can go for Lightning Arrow as well. And you will just be playing that skill forever. Like many builds in Path of Exile, you need to be rerolling um, once or twice through the campaign into maps 
uh, in order to be actually be able to play your skill. So for me, that's a massive bonus. And on top of that, if you have a good filter, generally you can kind of just pick up bow bases as well as evasion bases, and you'll you'll be fine to progress to either X arc, right? I that's generally how I go about it. I go on a four link all the way to either X arc, and that's all I really need uh, in order to get my void stones. Now, the thing is, um, items on the low end for these builds are going to be very cheap. Early on, though, there's a lot of competition to get certain key items that give you massive boosts. Like, for example, when you want to be swapping to Critical Strike, Critical Strike bows are generally very in high demand early league. But once people progress past that stage, um, there is essentially a trickle-down economy happening where a lot of crafters will be mass crafting items for this build, and you will actually be able to get items for relatively cheap if you're sort of on the more slow side of players. However, the problem arises again once you get into ultra, ultra end game, where um, you're fighting over some very expensive pieces, which are very hard to obtain because of like, you know, small percentage chances to be able to succeed on either crafts or dropping items um, uh, from, you know, from mobs, for example, like from Watcher's Eyes, maybe something like Ancestral Vision or Lethal Prides, right? Those are very in high demand items, as well as um, High Resire, because it's just a great, great unique that everybody wants. And getting one six linked is uh, not only difficult, but also quite rare. So yeah, the budget is moderate for that reason, right? Because on the low end, it is very cheap. However, on the high end, it can get pretty damn expensive. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, I think the mapping is absolutely just excellent, right? It's one of the best mappers in the game. Uh, it, by far just like beats pretty much everything but um, at the expense of course it's defenses which are low right it doesn't have very good defenses you are not really able to fully rely on your defenses on this character because um, unlike some other characters which are able to tank big hits our, our strategy is to essentially have high enough evasion to where the likelihood of us taking a big hit is very low however if you're finding like something like bosses where every hit that they do is a big hit, um, evasion is going to help you up until the point where you don't evade. And then when you don't evade, you essentially just die. So you need to kind of have a little bit of, um, you know, you need to have a playstyle where you are looking to avoid abilities, especially from bosses or from very strong monsters that you might otherwise find in maps. So yeah, for that reason, defenses and bossing are sort of like on the average to low side. So definitely a word of caution uh, for you guys that are looking to have a build maybe that's more reliable for that kind of content. But the upside of it, of course, is that, um, yeah, it's, it's extremely fast. It's extremely fun, in my opinion. And um, it is why, you know, in the past, it has been the build that has been chosen by many softcore players. Like last league, there was something like 18% of people league starting Lightning Arrow. And it's for a good reason. It's a very, very good build. So yeah, that is sort of like the overview of how, what I think about the build. So if you are sold on the build, then we can sort of continue on from here and I'll explain a little bit about the atomization, the early, the mid and the late game progression for Lining Arrow. Now, there's a really nice section in the leveling uh, here that you find on the max roll guide where you can use this slider to essentially show you exactly where you need to be at what level. And there's also here very handy tips and tricks as well as a loot filter that you can follow that will be updated on day one and hopefully um, the filters are functioning on day one. So make sure that you have a backup filter, of course, in case maybe something happens. There are cases where sometimes loot filters do break on day one. However, I ensure you guys that you will be able to use this filter as soon as, um, you know, a fix is out there. So yeah, there's a lot of tips and tricks here that I, I think you guys should definitely check out. And some of the things that you need to keep in mind is, of course, something like precise technique. It is a very, um, you know, it's an easy mistake people can make, but I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. So here, first of all, I'm just going to collapse these tips and tricks so I can show you guys the passive skill tree and how we progress through it. So we'll just zoom in here so I can show you guys that we have a little slider and you can pull the slider and it will show you exactly what nodes you want to pick up at, at what level and essentially um, give you guys a good progression through the passive skill tree. And on top of that, as you're, you know, um, sliding the slider here, you're also seeing what skill gems you want to use at what level and what type of links you can expect. Now, whether you have a three link or a four link or anything like that, you don't have to exactly use what I have. However, this is the recommended um, links that you should be using at this level. Uh, although, like, you know, maybe if you get unlucky not finding a four link green or if you have like a blue or something like that, you can always put like added lining instead of added cold. 
to though you got to be mindful that then you have to have like a little bit of intelligence to equip that but basically what i'm trying to say is that um you don't have to have exactly what i have you can mix and match things here and there but it's just um this is the sort of best case scenario what you should be using right um so yeah you can go all the way into end game so the first thing you want to rush of course here is a uh, precise technique now precise technique is a keystone which can be a little bit punishing if you don't know what you're doing but i'm just going to explain it real quick essentially what it does is it gives you 40 percent more attack damage if your accuracy is higher than your maximum life and the way that you check that is you open your character panel in um in game and essentially what you will do is you will check that your life is um you know that your life value is lower than your accuracy rating now where you will find that is when you go into the character panel you know you will click on a lightning arrow for example and then you will scroll down and you will see main hand accuracy rating and this value and what you what you want to make sure is that this value is actually higher than your life however since i am uh you know on this character progressed uh past the point of using um a precise technique and the value is actually going to be lower than my life total however you know when you're leveling and stuff like that make sure that you see you keep a track of this value here 2200 uh, and 44 and then you check your life and you want that to be higher than your life total and uh, essentially it's very easy to do that because all you really have to do is spec the nodes that are um that are sort of like show to you here in the guide as well as the path of building of course and by the way i forgot to mention but you can basically just come here and if you want to grab the path of building it is right here in the middle and you can just grab that and not worry about any of this stuff if you are a more advanced player so yeah the path of building will also be in the description of course for you guys yeah you will grab precise technique and then you will rush for graceful assault because graceful assault essentially is going to be giving us onslaught on kill and early on in the game there's no way to actually get onslaught on kill aside for you know, uh, Graceful Assault, since they have actually removed the Onslaught Gem as well as the Onslaught Flask. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that you can always grab more life on the way to things. Like, you can always grab more life here and more life there. Um, that is totally up to you. But yeah, so for example, here we will take Farsight. This is going to give us accuracy. And then we will also take increases and reductions to projectile speed, also apply to damage with bows. This means that any time you get increased percent um projectile speed on any of your gear as well as um, on the passive skill tree this will double as both giving you a uh, quality of life in that your arrows travel faster therefore your damage will feel more um you know snappy and instant but also double as you know giving you damage which is like double dipping on quality of life and damage it's just, it's just one of the most amazing masteries in the game and why what's some, one of the reasons why bows is so strong and then from there you know here i like to sort of like fill out some of my life uh, but then I also go for this elemental mastery. This elemental mastery is also another reason why bows are so broken, because it, what it does is it has a 25% chance to treat enemy monster resistances as inverted. So one in four hits that you do against the monster is going to take its resistance. Imagine it has 40 resistance and it's going to invert it. Therefore, you know, one in four hits will uh, treat monster resistances as though it has negative 40. So that's almost like having 80 penetration. And now, there, like, a lot of monsters have, like, high resistances, and those are the monsters that you generally have trouble um, killing, right? Because resistances are, um, you know, a huge way to mitigate damage. So this is just crazy amounts of damage. It's something like 20% more damage in Path of Building. However, like, later on, once you get, like, a little bit of penetration and stuff like that, it does uh, become less relevant but it's still just insane it's one of the best point 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 for point masteries in the game uh then we go for here accuracy mastery because at this point our level is getting quite high and as we spoke about earlier precise technique we need to keep up with the fact that our accuracy is getting lower so then we will go for the accuracy um accuracy rating here as well as the mastery that gives us 500 flat accuracy and negative two accuracy per level as you're leveling, you will lose accuracy uh, over time, but it, it this shouldn't really matter because we'll get a little bit more later on and we'll also be getting some from uh, Precision too. So essentially, yeah, you will be grabbing uh, these points here. All right, so for your ascendancy choices, of course, you're going to be a Deadeye. And the Deadeye um, is going to go for Gathering Winds first, of course, because Gathering Winds will give you action speed and action speed is going to be basically what it is, is a multiplier for all of your other action speed stats kind of like for example movement speed and attack speed right so what it does is for example if i have uh, attack speed like one attack speed 
and I have uh, here fully stacked up Gale Force, aka 20% action speed, is what, what it's going to do is it's going to make me do 1.2 attacks per second rather than just one. And it's the same with movement speed. So if I have 100 movement speed, this is going to give me an additional 20 movement speed. But the more movement speed I have, the more I get value I get from gathering wins. So it's a really nice tool for leveling because it's going to make your um, damage go up substantially, you know, by 20%, your movement speed by 20%, and also your quality of life because of just how nice it feels once you do spec it. Now for Cruel Labyrinth, we're going to be going for Far Shot. Far Shot is insane because it's going to be giving you up to 60% more damage to targets as the projectiles travel further. This means that we need to position ourselves in a way where we are as far away as possible from the monsters. And yeah, so the damage always counts from where your, where your character is and how much the projectiles travel, right? So in the case of us using uh, returning projectiles, it's going to be basically counting the distance traveled to and then the back as well. So essentially, yeah, far shot is just crazy. And with your totems as well, it's going to be uh, looking at the distance from your character to essentially where the target is. And yeah, it'll look at like basically it'll draw a straight line. It'll give you more damage according to how far the target is. Now for Merciless Labyrinth, this is when we want to go for two additional arrows. And once I spec into this, you know, usually at level 60, 62 or so, that's when I swap to Lightning Arrow from Rain of Arrows. And uh, that's when it starts to feel really good because you'll have two additional arrows from the passive skill tree, two additional arrows here and one baseline. So, you know, you'll have four plus one, you'll have five arrows and that'll feel pretty good already to start playing lightning arrow. And then later on, of course, you can get additional arrows from your bow, your quiver and that kind of stuff. Now for Uber Labyrinth, this is when we want to spec into focal point. Focal point is nice because it gives us additional mark effect, which, uh, you know, sniper's mark will give us a bunch of additional damage taken to the monsters who are affected by those marks. Therefore, you know, it will also just give you more damage. But one really underrated uh, thing about the focal point as well is that it makes you take 25% less damage from enemies near your marked targets. So essentially, if you have like a rare and he's marked and he dies, um, any monster that's around the corpse as well as around the monster when he's alive are basically going to be dealing 25% less damage to you. That's pretty good. That's a nice little defensive layer. And... Uh, yeah, it's not going to keep you alive for like in, in like many cases, but it's just nice to have it. You'll you won't notice it uh, that much, but it's it's pretty damn good. The damage is definitely crazy, right? So that's why it's worth the focal point for sure. And then from here, we want to further progress our tree to, you know, fill out the life as well as some of the movement speed here. And this might seem a little odd, but essentially what we're doing is uh, we're creating a new path for the passives so that we can respec all of this and have a more efficient path. So at this point in the campaign, you will have enough regrets in order to do this. So then you respec that point, you spec through here and the life, and then you will just chunk all of that off. And we trade that for having um, additional resistance as well as critical strike and elemental damage. And then we will path all the way up here for elemental leech, uh, sorry, uh, attack leech. Uh, attack leech will mean that we know, we know we no longer have to have a mana flask at this point therefore uh, at this point in the campaign you can drop your mana flask which we were basically only using our mana flask to this point to get us um you know to essentially enable primal spirit and because primal spirit gives us four mana on hit uh, if you've used a, re a flask in in you know 10 the last 10 seconds so yeah, but at this point we do go for Clever Thief so that we get uh, we get some leech there and this is going to be really nice for life leech as well. It's going to give us a bunch of sustain and then we fill out a bunch of nodes here for additional damage, some accuracy and here for some penetration too. So as we progress through the campaign, you know, at this point we are level 54. We want to go for additional projectiles as well as pierce and more additional projectiles there. So around here, level 60, which is when you finish uh, Merciless Laboratory, uh, this is when I like to swap the Lightning Arrow from uh, Rain of Arrows because we are at a point where we have two additional arrows from the tree and then we are also tr already getting like a bunch of Pierce too, which is essential for Lightning Arrow to feel good. So yeah, now once you fill out those things, you will essentially already be popping off with Lightning Arrow and then we fill out the rest of our tree and this is when we want to jump to, uh, you know, the progression tab essentially, which is uh, where everything happens in Path of Exile, right? At this point, if you finish the campaign, you have basically entered 
I want to say endgame, but in reality, this is where the tutorial has ended. The campaign essentially in Path of Exile is just a tutorial. And this is where the real stuff starts to happen. So the first of all, the first thing that we want to do is we want to get a, a good weapon, right? We want to get a weapon with high elemental damage and high attack speed. The next thing is we definitely want to be filling out our gear with evasion pieces because evasion pieces are going to be making sure that our um, you know attacks are not killing us. We're, we're essentially like avoiding damage where possible and we want to fill them out with resistances, life as well as evasion, of course. And you always need to make sure that your resistances are at 75%. That is absolutely mandatory. Now, since you'll be swapping around gear quite a bit at this point in the game, you know, keeping up with your links and chromatics, like your colors and stuff like that, and your gem links and whatnot, is pretty annoying. Um, but, you know, you need to make sure that you keep up with that. So make sure that you are picking up chromatic items and that you're vendoring them so that you can actually make sure that you're recoloring your gear and getting the right gem links in there, right? Your flasks are very important in Path of Exile. So your flasks are going to be basically giving you additional buffs, which are always going to be active while you're clearing maps. However, are going to have very little uptime during bosses. So what you want to do is you want to mitigate, uh, you want to make sure that you are rolling them well with percent increased evasion, movement speed, and reduced effect of shock on you during effect. Reduce effect of shock on you during effect is going to be nice because um, if you do actually end up getting shocked in the early game, which is where we can't actually mitigate um, our uh, you know ailments, this will allow you to essentially reduce the increased damage taken that you would get. So yeah, having that is a really nice quality of life for sure. Then we want to sort of start to aim for getting a five or a six link. You know, a tabula rasa is expensive, but you could go for a tabula rasa. I generally just look for a corrupted six link, right? Which you can search on the Path of Exile trade website. And um, in there, I would look for the specific gem colors that I need, which in our case is going to be, you know, um, basically uh, four greens, one blue and one red, which uh, you can see here. Sorry. And then once we want to swap to Critical Strike later, we want to have two red instead. So if you want to go for a six link um, for the later swap to crit, you want to make sure that you are using uh, one with two reds. However, if you're not ready to swap to crit yet, you want to make sure that you're getting um, four green, one blue and one red. Then for our amulet, you can use the Karui Ward. And later on, uh, once you go for Critical Strike, you will be swapping to a high reach truth. However, the Karui Ward in early game is pretty insane because it gives you projectile speed, which, as we said earlier, is going to give you projectile damage. It also does give you projectile damage as well as accuracy, some strength, which fills out, um, which is like going to enable you to equip certain gems and stuff like that, and some movement speed, which is pretty cool. The only downside of this amulet is the fact that it doesn't give you life. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty sucky, but yeah, it's going to be very, very good for early game. And then, you know, I'm just listing a little bit of... Um, useful uniques uh, that you can also look for but make sure that you're not getting too many uniques on your build because uniques do have some pretty hefty downsides and these downsides essentially um are going to make your character zhp so essentially you'll get to the point where like your character is not getting much hp because many of these uniques actually don't have uh life rolls on them now this is the part where you're making the biggest swap um on your character because this is when you are entering the end game uh, or mid game rather variant of the build, which is the critical strike variant. So we will be on specking precise technique at this point once we get a bow with high critical strike rating. And the only way to get a bow with critical strike rating is to use a bone base, ivory base or a spine base because these bases have a good ratio of attack speed, base damage as well as critical strike. So these are just by far the best bow bases in the game for bow characters. They have a 6.5% critical strike base, uh, base critical strike rating, which is then further enhanced by percent increased critical strike chance rolls. And yeah, you need to have high elemental damage as well as attack speed and a high critical strike chance roll here. You can also try to craft your own with deafening essences. Um, they're pretty damn expensive early on, but I have provided here a little link that you can hopefully it's going to translate to the new league. I will double check that that is um, going to be available for you guys. But yeah, uh, the the bows are like they're pretty expensive at this point in the league. So be mindful that you want to save up a bunch of currency for the bow, and then the bow is going to be basically skyrocketing you into end game because once you do the critical strike swap, you will basically have enough damage to take on the entire game. Now that you have your bow, you can go for a high risk truth. So high risk truth 
has a very high roll variance. You have 25 to 50% critical strike multiplier on this amulet, as well as 40 to 80% dexterity. Not percent, rather, flat. Sorry about that. So you have, um, you really want to go for a high critical strike roll, but um, the dexterity doesn't really matter because we're getting so much already from the tree. So yeah, just look for one with like a decently high critical strike multiplier roll. I've seen many people rock a fucking 25% here. Guys, you don't want to do that. You want to get like a pretty high rolled one. All right, don't don't cheap out on this. It's like it's they're really cheap anyways, early league. So yeah, make sure you're getting one as close to 50 as possible. You can also use catalysts on it, but they're really damn expensive. And uh, we want to be uh, anointing here, either assassination, throw seeker or true strikes. True strikes being the cheapest, right? Which is the black teal and crimson oil. But if you if you yet can't afford it, you know, you can always go back to anointing, um, you know, two verdant and one teal like we did in the past for fury bolts. But I think at this point, once you get your endgame amulet and it has a good roll, you kind of want to go for a good anoint on that. Now for the gloves, Shadows and Dust are still king. These gloves are insane. They're going to be giving you critical strike multiplier as well as a bunch of evasion and uh, unholy might, which we, we, don't, we don't really care about, but we want Rampage. We want Rampage. Rampage is crazy. Rampage is basically going to give us a buff that um, increases your movement speed as well as your damage as this like little counter pops up and it's kind of like essentially the more monsters you kill the more damage and the more movement speed you have so as you get towards like the you know 20 percent through your through your map you're going to be like zooming and you want to keep up this kill streak uh and you just get like crazy amount of damage so you can see one percent movement speed per 20 percent rampage and two percent increased damage per 20 percent rampage step and you get one rampage per each monster killed and you kill hundreds of monsters in each map so that's that's really really nice and at this point, you basically have, um, yeah, you're ready to go into itemizing into some pretty big boy gear, which I'll go over with you guys here in a sec. All right, so once you have gone through and you have checked off all of these mid-game milestones here, your gear is going to look something like this. So you're going to have a pretty damn good bow with try elemental damage, critical strike chance, and you can have crafted attack speed, or you can uh, also craft critical strike chance on there. That's totally up to you. And yeah, uh, good bow. That's what we were looking for. Then we're going to be basically looking for like uh, amethyst rings. They're really nice because amethyst rings give you percent increased um, chaos resistance for the implicit. And that's going to allow you to essentially um, have, you know, it's basically the, the best implicit that you can get in the game, right? So amethyst rings, if you can get them, otherwise, you know, you can also look for vermilion rings or, you know, two stone rings. But those are basically the only bases that I would look for. So for two stone amethyst, as well as vermilion now for your bases uh, guys it's like really important that you actually go for high evasion bases all right so if you want to know more about like something like evasion bases right you can always go on the poe wiki and you can search for like helmet body armor gloves uh, and, yeah, boots like stuff like that and then you just scroll all the way down to evasion bases and you can see which evasion base is the best for you so for your helmet you want to be getting high life some suppression as well as, uh, you know, a little bit of resistances here, if you can do that. And then you want to craft uh, damage taken, um, you know, physical damage taken as fire. That is the, probably the best craft that you can get on your helmet there, for sure. Then for your rings, you just want some resistances, some chaos res, as well as life. And if you can, you can craft elemental damage with attack skills. And it's pretty much going to be the same here as well. For your body armor here, you can go for, you know, suppress, as well as some life, some resistances craft uh, physical damage taken as fire and then you can go for eldritch implicits of um, you know grace has increased evasion or increased of increased effect of anger as well or um, you know haste depending on which one you're using then increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills is going to be you know further increasing your auras and giving you more damage as well as defenses the gloves uh, you can look for corruptions on these now you base crit and frenzy charge are by far the best corruptions so look for those. I put Frenzy here because generally it's a bit cheaper, but you know, depending on which is cheaper, you can go for that. Alternatively, you can also get a percent increased attack speed um, implicit if you want to. For your belt, you're basically looking for resistances, life, as well as increased elemental damage with attack skills. And you can find sort of see a trend here. Like there's very few stats that you're looking for on items, but you're looking for life, resistances, increased elemental damage with attack skills. Those are the main things that you want to look out for. And for the boots as well. And the boots, you definitely want to go for percent increased action speed on the implicit. 
that is going to be through Eldritch Embers. So if you can get that ASAP, that's going to be really nice. It's going to make your character feel pretty good. And your flasks, you want a Quicksilver Flask as well as a Diamond Flask and a Jade Flask too. That's going to make it, uh, that's going to be it for the mid game. For the end game, then we will go here to the end game and we will tick off all of these as we complete them. So as, we, as we're completing all of these milestones, you can go and check them off. And as you check them off, you can see that they are changing in real time on uh, this here character uh, model. So we could just go and check everything off. So you guys, like you can look for the rings and whatnot, for the belt and the flasks, as well as many of the jewels. So these jewels as well are gonna be pretty essential in the end game. For example, ancestral vision is gonna allow you to be ailment immune. The lethal pride is gonna be providing you with like percent double damage, resistances, and a lot of strength. So if you can get a lethal pride earlier rather than later, it's pretty nice because the lethal pride is essentially going to be giving you enough strength to equip all your items and never have to worry about it. Now, if you can additionally get like one that has pretty good stats, um, that is definitely recommended. And there is both a video as well as a written guide from, uh, you know, there's a video for me as well as a written guide from um, Tripolar Bear on how to find good timeless jewel seeds. So yeah. Definitely check those out if you are wondering how to get those. And everything else should be explained there as well. So now at the point we are at, we want to swap to the late game variant of uh, the gems as well. And this is when you'll start to see uh, some awakened gems too. Although like, you know, if you can't afford them at this point, it's totally fine. Just go for the non-awakened variants and that is cool. So uh, in late game, yeah, our bow is looking pretty damn good. We're getting a ton of damage on there. It's going to be like 1000 plus elemental damage. And not only that, it's also going to be providing us with potentially uh, a lot of attack speed, critical strike chance. And in some cases, if you are a rich boy, you can get additional arrows. Additional arrows are not going to be giving you additional single target damage, but they will be giving you some clear. So keep that in mind that like um, the difference between what, like a bow without arrows and a bow with arrows is going to be like five times the price uh right so prioritize getting elemental damage over that and then later on you can make the upgrade once you're giga rich which most bow characters end up being pretty giga rich because you're farming at a speed you know three times the speed of other builds so you'll be amassing a lot of currency and there is also here like a little crafting guide for all of these end game pieces if you want to know more about them but you know purchasing them is also totally viable so yeah we'll get a spine bow there uh, which still still here with our shadows and dust because they're going to be providing us with the most damage as well as uh, Rampage, which is damn cool. For the helmet, now it's pretty similar to what we had in mid game. But at this point, you want to have um, a loathing craft, which is essentially you're going to be using loathing essences on the helmet to get the increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. And then we want to aim for uh, fractured chaos resistance because chaos res is, uh, you know, chaos res is essential in Path of Exile now is no longer, um, you, you must have it. You just need to have it. And then I like to put intelligence on my helmet because you can roll up to 60%. And with this int roll, you'll never need intelligence anywhere else on your character, as well as some life and evasion rating. And for our chest, high desire is just broken. It's it's insane. It's the best chest for bow characters by far because you can get a ton of flat added cold damage as well as 30% suppression and an insane amount of evasion too. And evasion is going to feed into, you know, our defenses, which is super cool. Then we are still using the high truth at this point, you know, Maybe getting this catalyzed, getting a max roll or something like that. It's going to be really nice. And as I previously said, like this amulet is just crazy. It's going to be giving you so much damage as well as like a very high level precision and um, really good mana reservation efficiency for it. So it doesn't cost too much and critical strike bolt uh, and, and like it's a uh, Kali strike as well. It's it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's a, it's an insane amulet. The rings, uh, rings are going to be great. Like they're also going to be like pretty good at this point so you want to have like attack speed life resistances chaos resistance on amethyst bases ideally with elemental damage with attack speed crafted on that too and for the boots again we're just going for chaos res resistances movement speed and action speed on the implicit as well as avoid elemental ailments you need to have avoid elemental ailments on the implicit up to minimum of um, you know 26 percent to be able to cap out on uh, your uh, ailment avoidance you need to double check that, you know, when you open your character panel, like if I was to open my character panel here, you can see and you can scroll down to here, you have 101 uh, ignite avoidance, freeze avoidance, etc, etc. That's because we are going to be getting 50% uh, from the suppression, 
And then additionally, we're going to be getting some ailment avoidance from thick skin and from our boot implicit too. Very nice. Uh, our flask pretty much remained the same. Uh, you know, you can chuck in dying sun as well for additional projectiles, which is going to be pretty nice for your clear. But uh, one of the most expensive pieces here is going to be getting a feathered arrow quiver. You want it to be feathered, as I previously mentioned. Projectile speed is going to be also giving you damage. So yeah, feathered arrow quiver with uh, projectile speed, critical strike multiplier, flat elemental damage, life, and bow's fire additional arrow. This quiver craft is fairly expensive. However, I have detailed how you can craft it here. And yeah, you can sort of follow along with this or you could just basically go on trade and search one yourself as well. Now, everything else that you need to know about the build is either going to be present in this guide in the path of building if you're able to sort of um, yeah, like decode or sort of like if you understand how to read that. Or additionally, you can always come to my stream and ask questions. That pretty much sums up everything there is to know about a uh, lining arrow. And as you can hear, the bells are basically saying that it's time to end the video. And yeah, frequently asked questions, you can always find them here in the max roll guide as well. So you can you can basically like see um, you know now what you, know, you can go for the end game variants with Omni if you want to. Uh, loot filters, what map modifiers to avoid, which pantheons, what bandits, all of that kind of stuff and uh, when to swap the critical strike blah, blah 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 and yeah that pretty much sums it up for the guide i hope you guys uh have enjoyed this video i hope this was helpful so yeah thank you very much for watching everybody i appreciate you guys and um yeah peace out everybody oh seven